let us revise the different types of process variable that we should encounter in this lab experiment. First, the control variable. This is the process variable which is to be controlled. We wish to maintain this at a particular value for the system. Second, the disturbance variable. This is the process variable that causes change in our control variable. We have no handle on these and cannot control them in any case. Third, the manipulated variable. This is the process variable that can offset the disturbance variable. It is also known as control effort. Basically, whenever we have a change in the disturbance variable, we try to counter that change by regulating the manipulated variable correspondingly. From an input-output point of view, the control variable is at the output of the process, while the disturbance variable and the manipulated variable are at the input to the process. So in this CT1 experiment, we shall try to simulate simple systems and try to control the outcomes of the control variable by changing the manipulated variable. We shall be using MATLAB to carry out all our simulations in this case. You will be asked to handle any one of four cases depending on your group number. The first, the interacting tank problem with manipulated variable as the flow of water into the first tank, the disturbance variable, the flow of water into the second tank, and the control variable, height of water at the second tank. Second, the non-interacting tank problem with manipulated variable as the flow of water into the first tank, the disturbance variable, the flow of water into the second tank, and the control variable, the height of the water at the second tank. Third, the heater problem with manipulated variable as heat, the disturbance variable as flow, and the control variable, the temperature of water inside the heater. The fourth, the heater problem with manipulated variable as flow, disturbance variable as heat, and control variable as the temperature of water inside the heater. All these problems are basically pretty similar in nature. We shall try to handle them in a very generic way. Every problem will have a dynamic function associating the control variable, manipulated variable and the disturbance variable. This function must have been given to you in the PDF file accompanying the lab manuals. We shall use this function in the following upcoming steps. You must have been given a file structure with five steps incorporated as folders in it. Open MATLAB and browse to that folder. First, we shall try an open lip simulation of the system where we feed in the dynamic function given to us to a MATLAB function and then solve the ODE for a time period of 1500 seconds. This basically helps us to find the constants related to the system. Please ensure that proper units have been used for these constants both in the function and the script which tries to solve the function for the period of 1500 seconds. So we have been given two functions in this case, uh, basically one's a function, the other one is a script. We have the cst underscore nonlinear dot m. This is the function which shall describe the dynamic function that you have been given in the PDF. Okay, so here uh, we feed in the time the temperature which is the control variable for which we need to find out the time dependency and we have the q and the f which are the flow to the heater and the heat that is being fed into the heater right and we have been given the constants here uh, so just please ensure again that all your constants are in the same unit right and here we write the d temperature by d time right and so here we put in the equation that we have also been given right and then we open the script that we need to run okay in this case we have mentioned the f that is the flow to the heater and the q that is the 
heat supplied to the heater uh, as the uh, manipulated variable and the disturbance variable as you shall remember uh, next we solve the cst underscore nonlinear dot m function that we have mentioned so basically what the od45 does is it solves the differential equation given to it for a time period of 0 to 1500 seconds and here we fit in the manipulated and the disturbance variable next we plot the temperature versus time graph that we need and then we display the steady state temperature in the tank now we run this so here we get the graph of temperature versus time for the system that has been given to us now we save this image for use in our reports and we are done now we perform the second part in the second part we try to use simulink to simulate our system go to the second folder that is the open loop s function folder just make sure that you have the same cst underscore non-linear function copied from the first folder into the second folder next open s function underscore cst underscore nonlinear dot m and make sure that you have the same function written here now open simu underscore cst underscore nonlinear dot mdl this is the simulink model that we shall use to try and simulate our system using simulink in the simulink palette which opens up we can see that the model has already been built for you the q and the f the, that is the manipulated and the disturbance variable are being fed to the s function underscore cst underscore non-linear model which outputs the scope and to a file which has been named as response to perturbation dot mat here we can see the start simulation button and this is the simulation stop time now the simulation has been completed double click on the scope and then right click on the scope window and use auto scale to check the progress of the variables with time Take a screenshot of this scope by pressing the print screen button and then saving it. You can also see that the entire simulation has been saved to a response to perturbation.mat file. To use the response to perturbation.mat file, go back to the MATLAB main window, double click on this file and we can see that the plant data is already saved. If we just type We can see that there are two rows and a thousand and one columns. In the first row, the time has been saved, and in the second row, the temperature related to this time has been saved. Now let us go back to the simulation main window. Please play around with the step functions here and the step functions here to see various changes that appear in your scope. Always remember that. Every time you do a simulation, you should save the response to perturbation file in a different name because every time the simulation occurs, the response to perturbation file is overwritten. Now let us take a close look at the step function for the manipulated and the disturbance variables. Here we can see the step time. In this time, the function steps from an initial value of this to a final value of this. Now let us take a closer look at the S function model. Here we put in the S function name which has already been given to you as S function underscore CST underscore nonlinear. Do not use the dot M extension at the end of it. This parameter 344.44 this should be the steady state parameter that you have initially found out at the first step 
where we did the first open loop simulation. Now after you have saved various responses in the response to perturbation.mat by right clicking rename So, do various step changes in the Q and F values and rename the response to perturbation.mat accordingly. Next, we will try to use linear identification to find the K and the tau that we can relate to the system. The third part is the linear identification part. In this part, we try to identify the K and the tau values for the system. In MATLAB, go to the third folder that is the linear identification folder. You can see the various response to perturbation.mat files that resulted from our experiments earlier. Now the error function.m file is the function which will be used by MATLAB to find out KP and tau by minimizing the errors generated by this function. Now the optim underscore error func dot m is the function that will be used by MATLAB to find out the KP and tau values by minimizing the error func dot m function. Now let us understand the optim underscore error func dot m script. The clear function is used to clear MATLAB's old remaining variables. The CLC function is used to clear the current screen for MATLAB. Next we have the UB, LB and X0 variables. The UB, LB and X0 are vectors which are used by fmencon to minimize the error function. The UB is used to define the upper bound on X. The LB is used to define the lower bound on X and X0 supplies the fmencon function with the initial guess solution. Now we have to remember for X0 or Xopt, there will be two variables associated with it. The first will be the KP and the second will be the tau. Options equal to optim set is used to set options for the fmencon function. Next, we have the fmencon function which uses the error func dot m file to minimize the errors related to the function, the x0 to use as initial guess, the lb and ub to be used as lower and upper bounds for the solutions and the options which has used by optim set to set options. Next, we display the results found. The error func dot m describes uh, the error function and returns the sum of the squares of errors which is used by fmencon to minimize the errors associated with this function. So we describe the del q in the first line which is basically final minus initial as set up in our step function in the second part. Then we use the load function which loads the response to perturbation file that we are trying to solve. Then we extract the time and the temperature data from the plant data which comes from response to perturbation.mat. Then we try to find out the modeled temperatures using a second order step response model as defined by us. Next, we find out the absolute differences between the model and the temperatures and save them as errors. Then we save the sum of the squares of these errors and return them. Let us now run the optim underscore error fun dot m script. Click on the green button in top to run it. The script has now completed its run. So we can see that every iteration has been output and we get xopt which is equal to these two values. 
Now we have to remember that the first value of xopt is kp and the second value of xopt is tau as related to our system. Now we run optim underscore error func for different response to perturbation files that we have in our system. This will give us separate kp and tau values. In the end, we take an average of the key values and the tau values and use it for our system. Next, we shall try to use direct synthesis to find out the PID values for the controllers in the system. Next is the direct synthesis part where we find out the P and I settings for the PI controller that is to be implemented on our system. Open MATLAB and go to the fourth folder that is the direct synthesis folder. Here we can see a controller settings.m script which can run to find out the various values required. Now we feed in the value of kp, the value of tau p as found out by our system. Using the formula for direct synthesis, we find out kc for our system and the tau i for our system. Hence, the controller gain is output and then the controller integral time is output. Finally, the settings in the controller dialog box is output. Let us try to run this function. Here we can see the output, the controller gain kc, the controller integral time, the setting in the controller dialog box, p and i. In the kp and tau p values, use the average k and tau values that you found out in the linear identification part. Take a note of this p and i values because this will be used in our next part where we shall implement this on a closed loop non-linear model. Now we start the last part of our experiment. Here we implement a closed loop PI controller on the system and check its performance. This will give us a hands-on experience of how our system should perform in real life. Go to the fifth folder in your setup. Here copy and paste the cst underscore nonlinear.m that we made in our first part and the s function underscore cst underscore nonlinear.m that we made in our second part. Next, open the cst underscore nonlinear feedback pi control dot mdl file. This is a closed loop pi controller implementation on our system. This is a pid controller. Here, put in the p value that you found out from the fourth part and the i value that you found out from the fourth part. Click on OK. Next, put in the steady state values of Fi and Fd. Next, put in the step function that you wanted to take. This step function will occur at this time interval and will change from this initial value to this final value. Now, this is our simulation stop time. This is the button which will start the simulation. We have two scopes in this area. The first scope. This records the H2 actual value that is occurring at the system. And the third scope. This records the step change that we provide to the system. Now let us try and run the simulation. We can see that the steady state is approaching and hence we can pause it. This simulation data will be saved in the after underscore PID dot mat file. To get the contents of after PID dot mat, use data equals to load after PID dot mat. This will give you a time series explanation of the data. And you can try.
to browse the data. Also remember to take a print screen of the scope senior model after every simulation. This concludes our lab experiment. Remember that in this case we are running a simulation for our system. In the following CT2 and CT3 experiments, we shall be conducting the process control exercise hands-on on the system that has been allotted to us. All done. Now remember to zip your files and folders and mail it to yourself for preparing the report.